We're now joined by the Executive Director of UN Women, Pumzili Mnamba Nguka, who has spent her whole life uh, framing the arguments for why we need to take action on behalf of girls and women to change the levels of equity that they experience in all kinds of ways. Um, she served as Deputy President of South Africa and before that she was Minister of Minerals and Energy. She has a huge experience of law, governance, but she also has a passion at heart. And I think that's what we draw on when we meet her because we know how much she cares. From Zilli, you were a teacher um, when you started out in life. And I know that one of the things you'll be constantly thinking about with UN Women is how to educate the world about the plight that girls and women find themselves in, but also the courage and resilience they have to make change happen. And I'm wondering what you think this current spate of protest, outcry, and, uh, and um, a vivacious demand that's happening at the moment around racial justice, specifically around girls and women, do you think that is making an impact? Do you think it's going to make a difference? Um, thank you so much uh, for, for having me. Um, you know, what we are seeing now um, is uh, radical impatience uh, of uh, people uh, who are affected by racism, uh, but also um, people who are, who are also affected by discrimination because of their gender. Uh, the, 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 the intensity of impatience at this moment uh, is making people decide to actually go out uh, in the street to protest, notwithstanding the risk of being uh, infected. This is just how much uh, uh, angry and impatient uh, uh, people are. And for women of color, girls uh, of color, it's obviously protesting uh, for both reasons. Do you think this radical impatience is awakening people to that fact? And are, you, are there enough people around the world, white women like myself, who are going to stand up alongside and say, this is not a society we're prepared to live in anymore? Do you see optimism here? Yes, firstly, I think uh, for, for women um, who are part of Black Lives Matter, uh, it's also saying in that message, uh, Black women's lives matter. So we need to also emphasize that. Uh, 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 the campaign that uh, supports Black Lives Matter, which we in, in UN Women also strongly support, uh, is say her name so that we don't forget uh, that women are also uh, affected. Uh, we, I am hopeful that uh, these uh, uh, protests are demonstrating to everybody, to people who are bystanders, um, that uh, there is no time for bystanders we actually require everyone to be in the fight. Uh, solidarity is important in times like this because just like uh, the coronavirus has shown us, a virus anywhere is a virus everywhere. And brutal racism that kills people brings the message very close, but we also live with subtle structural race, everyday racism. Uh, that is in our offices, that is in our communities, that is in our churches, which also needs to be called out. Mm -hmm. Now that we've had to all be isolated and reach out online, it's very clear who gets left behind. And this particular Wow Global, 24 hours across the world, which is an amazing thing to be able to do. However, you know, we know that there are plenty of people who still just don't have access to a machine or only one machine in their household or none at all in their communities. And so this is another huge change. I love the idea of you saying we have to understand this is as important as water in terms of something that will help you live a life. Beijing plus 25. I mean, we've come a long way. Girls and women have come a long way. And men and women together have had many good conversations about the, 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 the equity issue 
of you know, where girls and women stand within a society that's never made us equal yet. Do you think that the, the anniversary in 25 years of Beijing m makes us able to say, look, we'll measure the distance we've come from, but we can now say these are the imperatives of the next few years? As you, you know, you and me are in the generation that says fought for girls' education. And this is one area where we were making uh, progress, not quite fully there yet, but uh, there was a, a roadmap. We were going somewhere with girls' education. Now, because of COVID, so many girls are at home. And we know that when schools close, we've seen it during Ebola, then girls don't go back to school. Girls get married off during the time where they're at school. And we have so much teenage pregnancy during that time, and that erodes the gains that we've made uh, in education. That has been a, quite a serious concern. That is why also access to online learning also is very important because it's those girls who are really idle, uh, who are at, at their highest risk. So for the 25 years uh, and the, all the investment that has been made in education, to be just wiped out in a matter of a few months is truly tragic. So we do need to be uh, paying attention uh, to that. And then uh, maternal health. This is also another area where progress was being made. Again, not there yet, but we had seen uh, the deaths were decreasing. Now hospitals are full. Women are unable to have access to hospitals for safe deliveries because, you know, children will be born in the midst of a pandemic. And we need to make sure that uh, we do not make those uh, needs uh, less important than the needs uh, that uh, COVID patients uh, have. And I, I know that for many governments, this is a, a really a difficult situation. We also, you also need to make sure that you protect uh, these mothers uh, from uh, people who are COVID positive because you also don't want them to be, to, be, to be infected. But again, like say her name, we have to call these things out. Otherwise, women will be, lost, will be left to fend for themselves and we cannot afford that. There was a time when women could give birth uh, with the safety of a trained midwife. We don't have those. This is also part of the collapse of the primary health care system that we're seeing when we are building back better, we need to restore. W women's bold leadership, impatience for justice, impatience for change has got to play a part. And that, that requires us, I think, to be more outspoken and not in any way complacent. You know, what, what, what would you like people who are not in official positions like yourself to bring to the table to make change happen? During and after COVID, we have to call for a sustained uh, provision of, of, of services. We have to be interested to know what happens to the cases. Uh, what happens when women have uh, blocked the courage to go and report. We also have to look at what is happening in those countries. And this is like more than 100 countries, 128 countries that have a fiscal stimulus to respond to COVID. We need to engage with the relevant authorities about who is benefiting from these uh, uh, many, many uh, different programs. Women are in the informal sector, they are in small business, they are also in businesses where they do not have enforceable contracts. So they cannot make demands. We need you, uh, ordinary consent citizens. You write your op-eds, uh, send your tweets, be loud in the social media and ask questions and make sure that these women who may be falling between the cracks, who have lost their livelihoods, are able to benefit. We have seen the statistics in the US that uh, women and women of color in, especially are not benefiting as you would have expected from the biggest ever uh, stimulus package that has been uh, announced uh, by government. The process is complex and difficult. 
So these are all the things. Let's have, let's make noise about this. Let's go to the media. Let's make sure that uh, we highlight, uh, and let's write to our uh, uh, elected representative and ask questions about these things. Okay, so I'm going to end on your quote. Radical impatience. We need radical impatience. And it's a, it's a call out for that. So everybody watching at this point, from Zilli, thank you so much. Thank you for all the work that you do with UN Women and, for, and that you do as a sister. You're just a great person. And anybody who's met from Zilli will know that. Um, so you carry on because I know your day is full of Zooms and meetings and this after yeah. ever. But thanks for joining WOW Global 24. Yeah. Great to see you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me and thank you so much for doing what, what you do. You really are the, the, sail, uh, the wind behind our sail, whatever the saying is. Thank you for doing it. <laughs> Thanks, Fumzini. Bye. Bye-bye.